is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. Today I want to talk about the question, should I flux or should I not? Should I change my energy tariff with Octopus Energy? If you're not a customer of Octopus Energy already, then uh, you really need to look at them. One of the uh, convenient features of Octopus Energy is they don't restrict you, so you can swap and change between tariffs. So if I'm on the Octopus Go tariff or the Octopus Intelligent tariff, as I am, I'm allowed to swap from that. I think you're allowed to swap every few months or something like that, but uh, basically <laughs> you're just not restricted. So if I feel like a change and I want to move across to Agile, another tariff, I can do. And that's the same with export tariffs. Now, if you remember one of my videos a little while ago, um, I talked about, I was happy with my electric bills. I was happy paying 250, 300 pounds a year. It was peanuts. So why, why entertain the risk and the admin, the hassle of changing electric tariffs? But when I looked at it, I could be 500 pounds better off by moving to a, an export tariff. So that's what I did. And that's made me think that moving across from tariff to tariff isn't such a bad thing and isn't such a bad idea. And the admin's not as bad as you think. So is it worth doing or isn't it? That's what this video is gonna cover. Specifically, I'm on the Octopus Intelligent tariff. It's time to consider, should I move across to the Octopus Flux tariff? How much money will I save? But also, how will it differ how will I use my energy differently? And will that be a good thing or a bad thing? So let's start by talking about the tariff that I'm on and the tariff that I'm considering. So Octopus Intelligent is an import tariff. So I'm paying seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour. And I have an export tariff. I'm on a fixed export tariff of 15 pence a kilowatt hour for anything I export at any time of day. So yeah, get that right. 15 pence for everything I give back to the grid seven and a half pence for everything I draw in from the grid. So actually, if I just draw lots and lots and lots and lots in and then push it all back out, I'll be making a profit. So it's, it's a very good tariff. If you're on a battery, you can do exactly that. Bring the energy in cheaply, push the energy back out more expensively. So you're making a profit. The other good thing about being on that type of tariff where I'm paid well for my export is it doesn't make sense for me to consume my solar energy. So it's a little bit of a change. Instead of having all this free energy from solar, I'm interested now in what I can push back to the grid. I think last month I exported 91% of what I generated. And that makes you think, well, you're not using any, any energy. Well, of course I am. What I'm doing is importing from the grid at cheap hours between midnight and 5.30 in the morning. Well, half 11 at night and 5.30 in the morning. It's a six hour cheap rate tariff with um, Octopus Intelligent. And Octopus control that charging via the My Energy Zappy charger into our Mini Electric or our Kia eSoul. Moving across to a tariff like Flux is very different because it replaces both the import tariff and the export tariff. It's all mixed in one and there are now six rates to consider because there are three periods of time, each with a different import and export rate. So trying to simplify these six rates, the important one that I see here is the import rate in the flux period, the cheapest period where I can import energy from the grid, 15.15 pence. That's twice as expensive as the 7.5 pence that I'm paying on Intelligent at the moment and only half the number of cheap rate hours. Just two o'clock in the morning till five o'clock in the morning, not six hours like the Intelligent tariff. So this clearly points out that you're not going to be importing, you're not going to want to import energy as much as you do on the Intelligent tariff. So that means I'm going to be using my solar energy during the day instead of using it on the cheap rate period. Because why would I want to use 15.15 pence per kilowatt hour cheap rate and then export it for 15.51 pence? There's no gain. So yes, the price to export during the day, most of the hours, is 15.51 pence per kilowatt hour. Now this is where it is confusing, 15.51 or 15.15. You know, Octopus really could have chosen a couple of different numbers just to make it a little easier to identify them. But basically there's no profit importing cheaply in the morning and exporting during the day. 
For me, the peak rate importing of 35.36 pence and the day rate of 25.25 pence per kilowatt hour, those are irrelevant to me because I don't import energy during the day or especially during peak rate. I can use my solar energy or the battery and keep myself to the cheap rates. So I don't have to worry about those. But if you are considering this tariff and you do import during the day or the peak period, then you'll have to take those numbers into account, 25 pence and 35 pence per kilowatt hour. With the import prices being higher than Octopus Intelligent, it does make you wonder what's the point of going with flux. Even the export rate during the day is exactly the same as the fixed export that I already have. So where's the gain? Well, it's the peak rate export. That's the magic number. 25.85 pence per kilowatt hour exported between 4 o'clock in the afternoon and 7 o'clock in the evening. So what I'm going to have to do is save my solar energy during the day as much as I can in my home storage battery and then export as much as I can at the 25.85 pence. That way I'll be making more money than the 15 pence per kilowatt hour that I'm exporting at the moment. 10.85 pence for every kilowatt hour exported during those times. Will that offset the extra costs that I have because the import rate at 15.15 pence is more expensive than the 7.5 pence. So it's all it's going to be all about using solar energy during the day and not having any import prices, then exporting as much as I can. So I've got to compare the numbers, compare the two strategies, compare the numbers and see which one works out best. On to the serious numbers then. January through December are solar kilowatt hours generated. I've used a combination of last year's numbers and this year's numbers, so they are as accurate as can be. Obviously, some years you'll have less, some years you'll have more. But I've also used um, some percentages there on the right-hand side. Percent, there's two percentage numbers. One is the percent of energy we can export if we're on an export bias tariff as I am now with Octopus Intelligent and my fixed 15 pence per kilowatt hour export. So as you can see, 91% in May, that is actual how much we exported. 91% of the solar we generated we were able to export. So I can use that number, 91% of 1,023, and calculate the value in pounds and pence of how much I can gain on an export tariff of 15 pence. So when I'm looking at flux, I need to think about how much I'm going to export if I'm self-consuming it. So it'll be a lot less because instead of importing energy from the grid, I'm consuming solar energy, so I'll have a lot less to export. So these percentage numbers are based on my actuals for the previous year. So I can quite accurately estimate how much of that energy we are going to be able to export. And then going on from that, I can estimate how much of that export will be in the peak period where we get 25 pence per kilowatt hour. That's the plan. So yeah, this is quite a lot of numbers. So converting those percentages to pounds, these are the numbers we get. This is a straight calculation of the number of kilowatt hours we're going to export times the number of pence per kilowatt hour that we can achieve. I'm estimating from our excess solar that we'll have available after four o'clock in the afternoon, we should be able to export two kilowatt hours. So that's two times a 10 pence uplift in the amount of money we're being paid for export. That's 20 pence per day. Then finally, there's the amount of energy we can export from the batteries during that peak period. We've got five Pylon Tech batteries, three and a half kilowatt hours each. I estimate I can export a total of 12 kilowatt hours in that period, roughly four kilowatt hours per hour. So that's 12 times 25.85 pence, another three pounds 10 per day extra. Add in the 20 pence, that's three pounds 30 a day. That works out to be an extra £99 of export if there are 30 days in the month or £102 of export if there's 31 days in the month. January, February, November and December, I'm excluding those because I know we don't generate enough solar energy to be self-sufficient and therefore I would be importing from the grid at higher rates and it'll blow the calculations. So those months, I can't go with the flux tariff. But we're still not done yet because these numbers are just the export numbers. Because there's a difference in how much energy we'll be importing and the rates at which we'll be importing it at, I need to add in the cost of the imported energy that I would expect and deduct that from the amount we're going to achieve from export to work out which is going to be better in which months. Let's just add those numbers in for clarity. 
So here we go. Let's add in the costs for import. As you'd expect, under the flux tariff, where we are consuming most of our energy from solar energy and not importing it from the grid at all, then the amount that we're deducting for import on the flux side is a lot less than it is on the fixed export side when we are importing at 7.5 pence for most of our kilowatt hours for charging the car, heating the hot water and charging the uh, home storage battery. As before, let's add those numbers together so we can see more clearly what the difference is. So if I can believe these numbers, this tells me I can be yet again another £500 better off by moving to the flux tariff from March until October. But partly, I don't actually believe these numbers because I don't think I can be self-sufficient in March and April and October. I'm not confident about those at all. So the number of months where I could actually move to flux and not be importing at higher rates... I think is less. But even still, if I only went self-sufficient in, say, May, June, July, August, maybe September, that's one, two, three, four, five months, and I'm averaging 60-ish pounds a month. If, of course, these numbers are accurate. Have I missed something? So let's have a quick think. I've considered the import, the export, the battery, the solar, the periods, the tariff like for no it's not like for like is it because on the flux tariff i'm exporting all of my battery and currently on the fixed export tariff i'm only exporting about two kilowatt hours a day in the flux calculations i'm relying on exporting from my battery as much as i can 12 kilowatt hours on the fixed export tariff the amount that i'm exporting at the moment I don't export all of the battery. I only export about two kilowatt hours. So there's another 10 kilowatt hours I should be exporting, could be exporting on the current tariff I've got, which is at 15 pence a kilowatt hour export. So that would be £1.50 per day extra export that I could achieve. Multiplied by 30, that's £45 extra. Wow, this really shows, doesn't it? If you're trying to be optimistic, I could be telling you that it's £500 a month better off. And if you start to be more realistic and drop those numbers down, the number of months that you can do, and then get some accuracy, it's suddenly gone down to £300 a year better. But now, looks like under £100 better per year, being completely realistic and accurate. If, if, and here's a big if, if those extra kilowatt hours being exported from my battery prove to be true if i run out of battery and have to import from the grid then these numbers won't work if i need to use the car more than i have solar energy and i have to import from the grid these numbers won't work so let's try and summarize what i think i've learned from analyzing these numbers firstly if you've got some west facing solar i think you'll be better off and flux will work better for you because you've got more solar late in the afternoon during that peak period so you'll be able to export more so that's good if you've got a bigger battery than me or in a battery inverter that can export more than the four and a half kilowatt hours that I can export at any one time, uh, then you'll be able to export more. You'll be able to make more profit. So flux again might work for you. But the really big thing, it's about your energy usage. If you're not certain how you use your energy and when you use your energy and whether you might run out of battery, whether you need to charge your car at odd times, those are the things you've got to know in advance before moving across to a tariff like Flux. Otherwise, it might not work as well as you think. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope these numbers make sense. There were a lot of numbers here. Anyway, again, thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more energy videos. Bye for now. And what I haven't told you is whether I'm actually going to move over to Flux or not. I, I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it? It's under £100, and then there's a lot of if and maybes. So I think I'd be better on the fixed export. It does seem like the intelligent Flux, which uses specific batteries like the Give Energy battery, it pays a lot more. That's the tariff that you can be on. Flux for me doesn't look as good.